First part of any woodworking project, you gotta have lumber. For this, I'm actually gonna use this cedar tree. Obviously, there's a few steps in between it standing there and me being able to use it. It's coming down because it's in pretty rough shape. You can see how much, uh, how many dead limbs it has low, so it's not that healthy. It's gonna come down before long anyway, so this way I can get it while it's still good, get it to my sawyer, get some good lumber, and put it to use on the property. Now, this is not gonna be a how to fell a tree video, but I do wanna go over some safety stuff. If you've never felled a tree before, definitely take a class or at least find someone with a lot of experience to help you your first time. But I do wanna cover some things. Before you cut down any tree, you always wanna do side it. So walk all the way around it, check everything out. I'm gonna drop this tree right here. Fortunately, it's actually leaning towards me, so that'll help it. And it's canted that, that way just a little bit, so it might roll a little farther to my right than I prefer. I'm totally fine with that because over here we have a fence that I want to avoid. And there's no obstacles in the way that I'm dropping it. This tree beside it does have a few limbs up high that's slightly in front of it, so it might kick it away from the fence a little bit. But those aren't big limbs, and the tree up there is pretty floppy, so that's not going to be a problem with how it falls and making it go unpredictable in any way. If you're really good and you have all the equipment and expertise you need, you can fell almost any tree any direction. However, I prefer to fall trees the way they want to go. That normally works out well for me. And the way you can tell that is where all the limbs are, very few trees are perfectly straight and perfectly balanced with limbs evenly distributed all the way around. That's like you're alone in a field tree. Obviously this one's in a cluster, more of the limbs are on this side, which means there's gonna be more weight on this side, which is gonna pull it. I can see that because the tree is canting this way. If a tree is already leaning away, it's the way it's probably gonna to wanna to go. So that's all working for me. Another big mistake people make, which you see this on YouTube all the time, is if there's anything you don't want your tree to hit, make sure it's far enough away, it can't possibly hit it. We're gonna use a tractor to help a lot. So I have um, that big oak tree beside it between the cedar and my tractor to make sure my tractor is totally protected because I would be heartbroken to have that tree drop on my new tractor. Anytime you're working around power equipment, you'll make sure you've gone through the owner's manual and wear all the appropriate personal protective equipment, assess the risk, do what you need to do, chainsaw, so chaps, because a lot of times if you have any type of kickback incident, legs get got a lot, so Traps protect you, falling stuff, headgear, things flying, eye protection, loud noises, ears, um, also spinny things, so no loose clothes. Um, my shirt's tucked in, I can't quite tuck in this sweatshirt, it's a little too short, but I have elastic cuff on the waistband, elastic cuffs on the wrists, so nothing that's gonna be baggy or get caught. And again, spinny things, I don't wear gloves around spinny things that can get caught. And that covers it, I'm pretty sure. If it did miss anything, again, owner's manual. It's all in there. And huge thanks to Steel for sending out some amazing equipment to make this project. This chainsaw and the BT-131 auger we'll use later when we put the trellis in the ground, which was made in the USA. Always an awesome little kick. Of course, this dude is made in Germany where I spent three years living. Love Germany, so also love that. So all that out of the way, let's, uh, let's make a tree fall down. So note on the wedge, I used to be a double wedge guy, meaning you wedge from the top and the bottom. And I was thinking, which is a technique a lot of people use, might is when you have that wedge and then the tree drops 90 degrees, it has 90 degrees to fall and collapse on itself. And with that, you have less chance of the log or the tree kicking when it falls and going a different direction. I've since gone to this because the next cut is gonna be from the rear, slightly above this to create a hinge. You never wanna cut on the same plane as your first cut. You go a little bit higher to make that hinge. What I learned is that having a single wedge instead of a double wedge, when this hits this, there is the possibility it's gonna roll it a little bit, but what that also does is help break the hinge free so that the tree comes completely free of the stump because it's a really hairy situation when your tree goes down but it's still connected to the stump and you have to cut it free. So yeah, the single wedge, less chance of it not coming completely free. So that's why I do this instead of the double wedge now, if you don't know. But anyway, yep, time to make the, uh, the back cut slightly above where this is, the wedge is about a third of the way in. Once I get about a third of the way in from the back, that's when I'm gonna start really being mindful of watching the kerf where my blade is gone and seeing if that is getting smaller or opening. If it starts opening, that means this tree's starting to uh, go where it's supposed to go. 
and I need to get my saw out and move pretty quick. If it starts to close, that means the tree is going the opposite direction and it might bind up my saw. So something to watch out for, and then I can get my saw out quick and reassess. So cameraman Robbie went and uh, broke off a broom handle real quick for me. So we got a target to mark here. So I think somewhere around here is uh, about where the tip of, tree, tip of the tree should fall. So it fell, let's go check the target. I think we're pretty close and see uh, if we nailed it. So I scooted this back a little bit. This is actually the green patch where my stick told me it was going, but it didn't quite seem right. So I added a little bit, but yeah, it seems like right in between was it. But if uh, you walk over there and look at this, um, I dropped it right where I wanted to drop. If you look down the line of the tree, that's where I wanted it to fall. That's where I thought it was gonna fall. That's where it fell. Quick little log chain action. Pulled what I want to take to the sawyer out. Of course, all those branches I didn't get to are now really easy to get to. All my brush is up there. So the big stuff can break down a little bit more and that is all clear from what I want to keep for the tractor to come in, pick up and put in a brush pile. Now we just need to get these pieces off, buck this up into the sections that'll go to the sawyer and uh, put it on a trailer. As I expected, this cedar is definitely on its way out. It's got a bunch of rot in the pith. So don't definitely don't feel bad about taking it down. Got it all loaded up on the trailer. Gonna head over to my buddy Chad's place. He runs a milling and drying operation called Superior Artisan Wooden Slabs. I'll have his links below. He's gonna get this milled up for me so we can get this trellis built. <laughs> on this where my finger is the very center of the log okay so what we do is we can take measurements from this top bar here down we're gonna do the same thing over there okay and then we're gonna we're gonna adjust the mill frame accordingly until we get it parallel with the very center of the log that's how we know we're gonna be producing the best lumber and gathering the most material out of the piece Chad's help, that cedar I dropped that was dead is now a bunch of lumber that we can use for our project out here. But the grape trellis we're gonna make is gonna go off the end of these garden beds and this fence is in the way, which I've been meaning to take down anyways. So it's finally the time to take down this fence. So we're gonna knock this down. Then we can start doing our layout and building the arbor trellis, pergola, whatever you wanna call it. So we got our batter boards up, all of our lines are in, everything square and parallel and perpendicular and stuff. So now what I'm doing now that everything's set is putting some screws where all the strings are. So as we need to take the strings down and put them back up, we can put them up exactly where they are. If I don't, you know, kick them around everywhere. All the screws set, I just painted where I need to drill my holes. 
and my steel BT-131 auger made in America like that. So I'm gonna move the strings out of the way so I don't have to worry about getting them caught up. Drill the holes with the screws, it'll be easy to put the strings back. And uh, that way we can make sure all the posts are in the hole where they need them and get the post set. So as you can see, all the posts are staked now and uh, you didn't see us do that because we did a few to get our system, said we we're gonna record and with the heat, we just forgot to hit record. But yeah, basically, and it's pretty, is a two man job. Just check level all the way around and then we just use one nail each on some stakes. And this is where we're gonna leave it for the day. So when we come back, we'll start uh, doing the tops. So the two by eights that are gonna run long ways, we just got trimmed and an angle cut on the side for decoration, about to start installing them up. Um, we're gonna flush cut all these to the same height. So I'm trying to get the most height I can. So pick the shortest post and that's gonna be our reference. And from that is where we'll pull a level from and then cut everything to match the shortest, which is the one in the middle on that side, whatever side of the screen that is for you. Um, so yeah, we'll start there, start working our way around. We'll probably use um, a nail just to kind of hold things in place. And then I got some lag screws, shoot some lag screws in there, and that'll be the strength. I don't have enough of the two by eights to run a two by eight across the short ways, which I think would look better, but we just didn't have the material. So what I need to do is transfer level over here for you know the other side that's gonna go. So I'm just using a very straight two by four on my level. I'm gonna mark each post and then we'll still check level as we go, but having pulled level this way, then going level as we go, helps make sure that uh, if we made a mistake anywhere, we'll catch it. All right, so we're about to start doing the final cuts on the two by fours that are gonna go perpendicular to those two by eights. Off camera, Robbie cut our stack of two by fours with an angle on one side. I have them all oriented the right direction, so I can just pull them right off and onto the saw and make sure I cut the angle the right way so I end up with a piece like this, not like that. This would be tragic because I don't have extra material. I've also got some scraps padded to make sure I'm at the same length. Just set a concrete block here on the trailer as a stop block. Got some saw horses so as we cut, we can offload. And uh, just gonna get all these cut up real quick. All the two by fours are trimmed. Just about to put them up this way to secure them in place. I've got a bunch of hurricane ties and the appropriate screws for those. So time to uh, get these in, should go pretty quick. Got all the cross pieces on and bracketed in on the ends. Those hurricane ties weren't gonna work because the posts were in the way. So I just got some angle brackets and put them up. Next, we've got a whole bunch of one by three here um, that we're gonna use as purlins, I guess. I don't know what all the parts of a tregulous pergola, whatever it's called. But yeah, these are gonna go on top long way. I'm gonna use some two and three eighths ring shank galvanized fencing nails basically to tack them on, make it go quick and uh, pretty much be done. It's done. I'm hot. Forgive my wordiness. Um, 
So yeah, I ended up adding some concrete to the posts just because uh, it wasn't quite as stable as I wanted. One thing that would help, and I do have a few cedar logs left. I might go get milled and have two more two by eights done so I can add a piece on the long ends. And that would really add a lot more rigidity to the structure without the concrete. Got the concrete. That'll probably get me there, but might add those pieces later. Um, and once the concrete's done setting, then I'm going to knock these guys off. But otherwise, um, she's pretty much done. This is going to be a trellis for us. So I'm probably going to plant some honeysuckle, have it come over, be a nice little shady spot. Where the camera guy is right now is going to be our pool area, hopefully next year. Of course, as you see, we have the garden and orchard and everything behind us. So this will be a nice sitting spot for us. Really cool to have made this from lumber, from the property that was, you know, rotting and on its way out and just going to become a hazard. And we were able to catch it, turn it from a hazard into a feature from the property. Really makes me happy to be able to do that. Thank you very much to Steel for providing the chainsaw and auger to help me do this. Anyways, I hope you learned something, were inspired or at least entertained. And until next time, make time to make something. Hot. Especially up there. It's also done ish. It's concrete sets.